What's that? So this gentleman was admitted for a chest pain rule out overnight from the ER. He had negative troponins, negative BKG. Uh, just, just developed a return of chest pain. Lucas. He's diabetic. He does have a does have a pulse. You guys do have the IV there in his lab. He does have a pulse. What's yep. his pulse rate? Oh my God. Uh, it's it's rapid and ready. Oh yeah. And then all of the stuff on the crash car factory, you guys Put some monitor on, please, Patty. Yep. You guys can push meds. Oh, then that's what you need to use. Come on in. Okay, somebody's going to make notes. If you say yes, there's a pulse. There's a pulse. It's rapid and ready. Rapid here, you want it? Yeah. Okay, here. That's how no, I you do it. No, that's how I learned in ER. Are. You know, you just I, I don't, I don't, this is, right. get a time. What do we got for our pulse box? Do we have some a, a machine in here? Yep. So you oh. guys are getting him hooked up here. Okay. Oh. You're gonna tell us what's his pulse box? Well, we gotta turn the monitor on there real quick. We'll just assume so, it's all on the so they won't shut that alarm off. No, so we can call the operator and have her. We do can it. shut that alarm off. I just want to make can sure that okay. whoever's coming from the ER comes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Lab's here. Hey, uh, Patty, can you switch that? You can, can make all those notes, Sarah, whatever somebody says. Okay, you, know, you can say respiratory here. Yeah, right. Switch it to lead two. Yeah, Please make Marissa run here. Hey, it's all right. Woo! I'm still on All right, so that's, awesome. yeah, that's the rhythm that you guys yeah, have. And here are the vitals that you have. Blood pressure 158 over 93, SpO2 is 95. Oh, there we go. Okay, yep. good. And then you've got the actual live mon or rhythm over okay. there. So we're in SBT. Let's um, hang an IV solution, at least get something running. So we got, and flush so this IV, make sure it's working. Thank you. Oh, labs are drawn, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, he's been, he's been here for a while. Yeah, like 12 hours. Second actually, flush up? Yep. Not the wall, the patient. Yep. Well, these are not the screw top ones we have down there. Oh my god. Okay, guys, you gotta help, help us think. So we're doing SVT. He's he's um, symptomatic. Are we still threading pulse or pulseless now? And he's he's pretty well. He'll respond to pain, but he doesn't yeah. respond to voice. So he's definitely symptomatic. So we diagnetic. gotta get that heart rate down. So guys, what are we gonna give? Looking at the meds that we have available, we have epi, amiodarone, no, adenosine. Adenosine. We want to do adenosine. Okay. How much of adenosine? We want to do. Where's the book? We don't we don't do five. We do ten the first. Right? So it six and then six three. Mil in two. Oh, that's right. Good. So are we all in agreement that we yes. want to do six of adenosine? Sure. Yes. Yep. And then if it doesn't work, then we'll go to twelve. Six of adenosine going in. <coughs> we'll put, a, we'll put some oxygen on just because it's good to have oxygen on, Patty. Those are sats are 95. Yep, so his, his oxygen saturation is falling and his blood pressure is decreased too. He just cycled another one and it's 80 over 50. He still has a pulse though. And he's still 221. Response fiddle? No, no, this is really fun. He has a pulse. It's going to Amy direct started. This is just. I think we should. I think we should do another twelve. Another twelve. We just did six. Okay. Does it only been a couple minutes? I know. Fine. So he had no response to the to the amiodarone. Would it be reasonable to try again, or since he's so unstable, what else could we do? Okay. Was it the amio? I mean, I think he's going this direction regardless. Okay. But I mean, what what else would we do for like an unstable pulse or BTAC with a pulse, non-medication wise? Oh, cardio bird. Cardio bird. 
Yep, and he's unresponsive, so we don't have to sedate him, but he's also symptomatic, so let's cardiovert. Okay. And where's the sink? And we already have the pads on. There's sink. Charge in 100. Everyone clear? Clear. Everybody clear. clear. All right, so zap him, and you notice the change on the monitor. Do we have a pulse? So now you have no pulse. Okay, start CPR. Hannah, you gonna do CPR? Yep. Okay. Can we get the board behind you? Can we get the board behind you? No, we did not get the board because we didn't need it. Okay. Somebody no. grab the board? It's okay. We'll just <laughs> okay, <laughs> imagine we have the board under yeah, there because we have the crash card. Yeah. 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 Yeah
That's why the glass is in there. Just let him go. Well, no, because I can't see anything. You're just pumping. You're fine. I'm just pumping. You're just pumping. <laughs> His arm <laughs> fell off, but it's still painful. It's already cut off. Remind me, banana, banana. That's all right. After you have kids, you know, you don't really care anymore. <laughs> Just a vagina. Oh, That's all it is. That's all it is. Anyone who's seen them all, like, well, I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about that. She's prolapsed. Anybody want to start on a psychic line? Ain't fluids. That'd be good. I mean, we can't look at the H's, H's, H's and T's. But hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, what's blood sugar? Start with that one. Vamio's in. Okay. Flesh. We have something on the starting to be on this leg yep. because we don't have another arm. arm. And his blood sugar was like 200. Okay, he's type 2 diabetic. Type 2 diabetic. I'd say this is a good place, but I could probably get an IV in there, sure. Or drill him. Oh, now you're just IO and real quick. Oh, now you're doing IO because the IV went bad? No, we just want to see. What's his pulse ox? He only has one arm. Yeah, I knew he only had one arm. Pulse ox that you guys are getting. They lost the arm. Um, this is the one they rescued from the dumps. In the 80s, I mean, it's not reading well. You, you so do, you do actually cycle an okay blood right pressure right. for CPR, 86 right. over 53 with Hannah's chest compressions there. Okay, what about our end title? Oh, yeah, I'm going to hook it up. There. Epi, one milligram of epi. No, type 2 non diabetic, does he do dialysis at all? Uh, no, no, he's not. He just, he just has hypertension and type 2 diabetes. Just some of the normal prerequisites to a massive heart attack, hyperlipidemia, so stuff like that. Otherwise, he's all. Permitting one milligram of epi going in. Why was he brought in? The hospital. Uh, he was. He was. You might. You weren't in here for this, but he was no. admitted from the ER the night prior for a chest pain a little while. Okay. I was doing pretty good. Substernal okay. chest pain and diaphoresis. And flushed. And we've got a bag of fluids hanging, running out for possible hypertension. How long have they been in CPR for? How about the acidosis? <laughs> Um, monitor's been on for 11 minutes, but I think we've been doing CPR for approximately nine... Oh, let's turn some off. Yeah, drink me. Sure. About 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yep. Anybody have any ideas? Well, let's do that. Hypoxia's at 86. Um, acidosis, do we have lactic or pH from the lab yet? Uh, they didn't have any reason to have to do a blood gas on them. They're still working on that. Oh, of course. Um, blood pressure was what again? Uh, with chest compressions, 86 over 53. It's been a little while since that was cycled. Though. All right, recycle it. Still have a liter of hunting going. Um, hypo, hypo, hyper or hypo <laughs> with the temperature. <laughs> Right. I mean, he's still well, the first code, okay? <laughs> You're not even at two minutes yet. <laughs> HP. I think you're doing CPR. Shut up, Sarah. Rhombus. Right mm -hmm. I think that's a reasonable, reasonable consideration. No, okay. Has anybody called for like helicopter or? Well, they can fly with the Well, I mean, if we get him stable-ish. Two minutes. Two minutes, call CPR. Somebody on with this. On CPR. Okay. Do we have a pulse? This time you guys do have a pulse. It's very faint. It's very it's faint. Work, That's why I wanted All right. to get uh, in there. Rate shown on the monitor. Sorry. As you see there, 53. Here's me sinus rhythm. 
Okay, so you guys just saw a pretty good job by the uh, the group of folks that responded to this uh, mock cardiac arrest. I think that everybody that was there, uh, I really do want to commend them on their participation. I feel like they overall did a really, really good job and really got into it. And I think that this uh, definitely showed in the video. So first and foremost, really good job to everybody that was involved. So quick timeline recap. Um, I, you guys saw all the timestamps throughout the video, but just so we can uh, see them all on one uh, one sheet here, we'll just go over uh, the different times. Now, the response to the bedtime after the code blue button was pressed was 36 seconds, which is really, really good. Um, that uh, that was a pretty good um, a pretty good response from the med surge floor in particular. Now, granted, this was. Uh, in one of the old OB department rooms. Uh, this is the second time we've held a cardiac arrest uh, mock code in these rooms. But all in all, they had a pretty good response and they showed up with uh, several people, which which turned out very well. Uh, the uh, monitor defibrillator was applied around 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Uh, they first identified the rhythm and algorithm at 2.31. Uh, they administered adenosine at 3 minutes and 50. Uh, they performed a synchronized cardioversion at 521. Um, they identified a change in rhythm and a, uh, the patient actually progressed into full cardiac arrest at this point at 526. Uh, they initiated CPR at 533. An airway was secured at 7 minutes. Uh, first defibrillation that they gave was at 722. Uh, they administered a milligram of epinephrine at 7.32. A uh, second defibrillation was given at uh, 9.22. And then they gave an antiarrhythmic, amiodarone at 10.47. Entitled CO2 was applied at 11.52. And uh, they noticed another rhythm change at 12.14. Ultimately to achieve ROSC by 14.42. So what went well? Uh, all in all, as I already mentioned, the response time was great. I think that the amount of time that it took for um, the the people, uh, actually a pretty good group of people, there was about five or six people initially, um, which included our uh, med surge staff, nurses and techs, uh, our respiratory therapist. Um, that was that was really good for that for that 36 seconds from when the code blue button was hit you had a pretty good uh, turnout of folks um, we also had good response time from both radiology and lab uh, while you didn't see uh, them in the video as much um, you did actually see uh, ally from radiology jump up and alternate with the chest compressions which was a uh, a really good deal a great turnout as far as the uh, supporting staff um they did a great job alternating compressions, so nobody really did over two minutes of uh, manual chest compressions. They they switched each time that they were supposed to do, and this was communicated well um, throughout uh, throughout the team. And I felt like they did a really good job just keeping people fresh. Um, role delegation. So you'll see initially when they first came in, uh, Mary kind of took the lead, uh, started delegating roles, started getting people on the same page. Um, her and Hannah were kind of bouncing ideas back and forth and I think between the two of them on that initial response did a really really good job at getting the ball rolling um, you'll see later uh, ER staff came in Nathan came in and then he kind of uh, helped with uh, role delegation and uh, uh, getting uh, therapies lined up and so this was a really good um, really good team effort from this uh, this perspective but I think that everybody had a job knew what they were doing and it was it was all in all pretty good. Uh, as I mentioned, the communication of therapies, everybody did a really good job uh, brainstorming on what they should do. Um, when they did do something, they announced it out loud, so it was easy for the person who was recording to uh, write, the, write the stuff down and to keep good, accurate record of what happened. So... Uh, overall, I think that as far as the algorithms go, uh, they did a pretty good job with those. They followed them. I mean, there was some 
some obvious uh, uh, little things here that we're going to go over in the next couple slides that uh, could use some improvement, but they did, for the most part, uh, practice uh, that resuscitation under the appropriate algorithms. So uh, areas to improve. So identifying sick, not sick. So they walk in and we know initially this patient was in VTAC with a pulse, but he had a reported and pretty sudden uh, onset of, of, um, of uh, mentation decline. So this, uh, this guy was sitting in bed, admitted for a chest pain rule out. Uh, to develop chest pain became diaphoretic and now his mentation is poor so this alone even regardless of what the uh the vital signs uh would suggest because initially they weren't too bad uh, we got to identify that this guy's real sick like this is this is something that we might have to be a little bit more aggressive with our with our treatments rather than manage him with medicine initially um so know the basic acls uh, rhythms so you'll see uh, initially when they first uh, got the guy hooked up, somebody said that the patient was an SVT. Now, while these algorithms are uh, similar, uh, that tachycardia type algorithm, uh, this was actually a uh, ventricular tachycardia. So that uh, is something that's small, but we really do need to know the difference between those. Uh, so cardiovert early and unstable patients. So as I mentioned, the guy's unstable. The initial therapy really here, were they wrong to try adenosine? Would they have been wrong to try amiodarone? Not necessarily from uh, the American Heart Association standpoint, but I think that as we are able to identify this patient as a, uh, as a unstable patient who, you know, just had a sudden decline in mentation and, uh, you know, pretty suggestive of a cardiac event, I think that it would be uh, most appropriate to just go ahead and proceed with that uh, with that cardio version you know not worrying about things like uh, you know uh, sedation or or analgesics prior to that but to just do that as an emergency procedure um, so right after that cardio version the patient progressed into uh, into vfib now this uh this is something that we should recognize as a witnessed cardiac arrest and the patient should have actually received a defibrillation following that uh, following that progression into vfib so we we definitely need to look at this and then focus on um, realizing what is a witnessed arrest and shocking that witnessed arrest when it happens uh, as always Reduce time off the chest. You know, all in all, I think that most of these transitions were right around 10 seconds. Uh, there were a couple that were a, a bit longer. And remember that, you know, the more time that we spend off the chest, the uh, the worse outcome that the patient's going to have. Uh, one of these things, uh, we really we can really focus on this by just policing ourselves with it and actually counting this down. Uh, one of the tools that we use um, that I think do improve these numbers is the Lucas device. Um, the Lucas device did not make its way back for this, uh, for this uh, simulation, so that's something that we need to look at uh, in advance too, or we need to look at moving forward. Uh, and I know it's kind of, a, kind of a pain, but the Lucas does come from the ER, but it's something that we really need to make sure is making it back to these... Uh, to you know the mock codes but the cardiac arrests in general um so placing in title co2 so everything's driven off of this in title and getting the in title on uh as soon as we possibly can is going to be the best the best thing that we can do for the patient we can even just put the in title on just the bag mask device uh, and not necessarily have to wait for the uh, the et tube or the king tube to get secured but there was a fair, uh, a, a lengthy period after a uh, advanced airway was placed that the uh, patient did not have in title applied. So we need to get that on, and uh, we need to uh, be able to trend this because this is going to be our biggest indicator of the quality of our compressions and our resuscitation. Um, 
And then last, keeping an accurate uh, record of time, there were a couple instances that we could see towards the end that we were quite a ways out uh, on our pulse rhythm checks. Um, and as far as some of the medications, you know, epinephrine was an example that we were overdue on some of those. Now, when it when it comes to keeping record, this job really is something that often gets hand, handed off to the least experienced member of the resuscitation. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but this is something that, you know, most people consider a job that anybody can do. Now, what we want to uh, really, really hone in on here moving forward is that this job really needs to be um, given to somebody who you know, knows of the ACLS algorithm, somebody that is, you know, very well versed in what they should do and what times these therapies need to be given. Um, because ultimately, these guys are the ones that should be leading this uh, or assisting in leading the cardiac arrest. So if you've got a physician that's, you know, calling out treatments, uh, this person needs to be prompting the physician or whoever's leading the code that uh, certain uh, certain therapies are due so uh, not saying that the person who did this did a bad job uh, not saying that uh, in any way shape or form uh, they actually did a really good job the uh, the one issue that we had is that we fell out as far as times go on a couple different things so you know if you're on this job you need to be keeping an eye on the clock and anticipating the next things that are to come So uh, as far as uh, July's mock code, we're not going to do one this month. So uh, you can let your guard down a little bit. Um, obviously, the summer months are a little bit busy for everybody. Uh, we've decided that July we're going to take off. We'll get back into it in August. Um, obviously, you guys are seeing this uh, this video in July. Uh, you know, running the actual mock code itself really isn't... Uh, isn't the time consuming part. The uh, part that's time consuming is actually, you know, looking back through all of the footage from the video, uh, weeding through it, and uh, ultimately putting everything together. That's the part that's time consuming. So you really are going to be seeing uh, the video for the mock code about a month after it happened. Um, nonetheless, for July, you won't be we won't be doing one, so uh, don't expect to see a video in August. Um, we will do another mock code in August, and we're going to switch things up a bit. Um, definitely, uh, I felt like people had anticipated or uh, people realized that this was a mock cardiac arrest. There were there were some people that showed up that, you know, obviously after realizing it was a mock code, um, you know, went back to their, their departments, uh, which is okay, you know, if they're busy or whatever the situation is. You know, these are not uh, intended to... Uh, be a nuisance to anybody it's more or less just for a, a, a quality assurance and improvement uh, standpoint something that we just need to do so we will be switching this up to make it less predictable all right guys so all in all thank you guys very much for watching once again i think that the crew that uh, participated in this did a really good job um i'll say again this is definitely when these are definitely in no way shape or form um, ways to make people look bad or feel bad um, these are these are things that I think everybody can benefit from seeing and a lot of the mistakes that are made during these are very common and they're just things that are simply overlooked so if we are able to look at these things and see you know the errors that we make during a uh, simulation it should in theory improve our uh, our resuscitation efforts when it comes uh, to doing the real thing so thank you guys again